them. In fact, we just started this recently. I believe it was last week we started this deal with them where if you go down to the fort after this trip here, you present them your ticket, then they will give you 10% off admission. I'm going to be going into the current. Now, I don't think I explained that much earlier. You know, when I was talking about the tides, like I mentioned, we do see four tides here every day. Right now, it's doing what's called flooding in. In other words, it's going from low tide to high tide. I believe it should be high tide here fairly shortly, maybe an hour or so. And so right now, we're going into the current. So in other words, this section of the river flows both ways at different times of the day. That's right, ballast stones. Now you're probably saying, well, what in the world are ballast stones? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, they were very important to the early settlers here. These are, um, we also see manatees in here from time to time. Those are a little bit, uh, really a lot more rare to see than the dolphins. And we also see the alligators swimming around every now and then. These American alligators, for the most part though, the alligators tend to stay further upriver. Really one of the main pillars of our local economy around here. So the uh, Georgia Ports Authority, they're the ones that operate this port in the port of Brunswick, Georgia. Now together, these two ports bring in about $100 million per day. That's right, $100 million a day in coal-fired power plants. Produced electricity mainly for the trolley cars and street cars here in Savannah for a long time. Now this whole plant, Riverside, has been shut down now for about 20 years or so. They've been trying to figure out what to do with it ever since. You know, they don't want to tear it down because of the historical nature of that building right there. Well, the answer came about three years ago when this company came in here, decided to purchase Old Plan Riverside for about $9 million, and they are now planning on incorporating this building into a given hotel. That's right, Old Plan Riverside is going to be part of this massive 400-room luxury hotel here in the future. Going to have some retail space there on the bottom floors, a parking garage there, I believe, where they um, gravel lot is right there. So it's going to be uh, really something to see here in the future. You know, back in the day when they shut this plant down, it really didn't matter much that it was kind of an eyesore out here on the city front. At least, you know, that's just my personal opinion. As well as the Savannah. And I think we have the Florida still behind us. But uh, I do want to get back to these tugboats a little bit later on in the trip. And I want to tell you a little bit more about what's going on here in this area in the modern day. But what I would have... Another conflict was brewing with Great Britain. But before I get to that, some of you may have noticed that man down there waving that flag at us in front of the walls of the fort. That was what's called a Signal Corps flag, and he was trying to signal to us that there's some enemy gunboats up ahead. That wasn't just random wavings of the flags. That was a, a Morse code type of message he was just giving us, saying uh, enemy gunboats, and you may have noticed he just ran over to his signal cannon. So he's about to signal us with that six-pound cannon right there in the field of the fort. So get ready for that, folks, because he is going to be shooting that cannon off for us here very shortly. Now, the British never again tried to sail up the Savannah River to capture the city, so that fort pretty much after that point fell into disrepair, fell into disuse. But uh, he's going to be shooting this cannon off here very shortly, so I'm going to take a break here. He's going to shoot that cannon off, and I'm going to salute him back with our whistle here. So get ready for that, because we have a loud whistle. There it is. applause for that. They do a really, really excellent job out there at the fort. Thank you for that, sir. And maybe salute him back if you wish, because he's saluting us now. So, um, so of course, like I was saying, uh, this fort really started to fall into disrepair after the War of 1812. Effectively, than any type of smooth work in it ever could dream of doing. So that's why they realized that, yeah, these brick forts had become obsolete. That's why they just totally abandoned plans for the fort in 1877. We're definitely come to the riverboat.